Brace yourselves as we plunge into a bone-chilling adventure into the heart of winter wilderness. This isn't your typical seven-day challenge. This is survival in its rawest form, a test of endurance and wit in a world blanketed by snow and dominated by icy winds. The journey begins at the end of a road, where the comfort of civilization fades into the stark beauty of nature. From here, it's a deep dive into the woods armed with nothing more than a backpack filled with essential tools. In these conditions, every decision matters, every step counts. Building a shelter isn't just the first task, it's a life-saving necessity. As the temperatures plummet and the ground hardens under a thick layer of snow, the wilderness becomes a harsh, unforgiving tutor. With nothing but my backpack, I hiked into the unforgiving cold, ready to put my survival skills to the ultimate test. The journey kicked off with a hike into a secluded forest area known for its harsh winter conditions. The air was crisp, the ground frozen beneath my feet. The first task? To build a shelter, a safe haven against the biting cold. You see, in survival, shelter is not just about having a roof over your head. It's about creating a space that can keep you warm and dry, no matter what Mother Nature throws at you. So, using natural materials sourced from the surrounding woods, and a few essential tools from my backpack, the construction began. The basic structure was a lean-to, a simple yet effective design. A strong, sturdy branch served as the main support, wedged securely between two trees. Smaller branches were then layered against it, creating a sloping wall that would shield me from the wind. Next, it was time to insulate. I gathered pine branches, their dense needles perfect for trapping heat. Layer upon layer was added to the lean-to, each one increasing the shelter's ability to retain warmth. But insulation wasn't the only concern. Protection from the elements was equally vital. For this, I turned to a clear plastic tarp from my pack. Secured over the lean-to, it would serve as a barrier against the snow and rain. By the time the shelter was complete, it was more than just a structure. It was a testament to the power of preparation and adaptability, the very essence of survival. And as the first day drew to a close, the lean-to stood strong against the biting wind, a small haven in the vast, cold wilderness. But remember, survival is not about what you have but what you can do with what you have. And in the heart of winter, the ability to build a shelter can make the difference between life and death. As night fell, the lean-to stood strong against the wind, a small haven in the vast, cold wilderness. It was a reassuring sight, a beacon of hope in the heart of the freezing forest, and a reminder that even in the harshest conditions, survival is possible. With the shelter secure, the next essential was water. Now you might be thinking, in a winter wonderland, isn't water abundant? Well yes and no. You see, while the snow around me was indeed water, it was in a form that's not immediately usable. To turn this frosty landscape into a life-giving oasis, I needed heat. Starting with the basics, I gathered a substantial amount of snow, being careful to choose the cleanest, freshest-looking drifts. The key here is to avoid any discolored or dirty snow, as it can contain harmful bacteria or pollutants. Next, I fired up my trusty little camp stove. A small flame and a metal pot are all it takes to transform this winter's gift into a liquid asset. As the snow melted into water, I made sure to keep a watchful eye on the process. It's essential not to let the pot run dry. Why? Well, an empty pot can overheat and become damaged. Plus, constantly adding snow ensures a steady supply of water. But a camp stove isn't the only way to procure water in the wild. With a little ingenuity, I also set up a simple water collection system. Using a clear plastic sheet from my pack, I created a condensation trap. As the sun's rays warmed the ground, the snow beneath the sheet melted and water droplets formed on the underside of the plastic. These droplets then trickled down into a container. It's a slow process, but every drop counts in a survival situation. Hydration in a cold environment is crucial. You see, the dry winter air and the physical exertion of survival can lead to rapid dehydration. And let's not forget your body needs water for critical functions like maintaining body temperature and digesting food. So, as counterintuitive as it may sound, even in a world of ice and snow, staying hydrated can be a challenge. Securing a water source was not just a task. It was a lifeline. In the face of winter's harsh beauty, it's a stark reminder of how precious and precarious life can be. And that, my friends, is the essence of survival. The third day dawned with a new challenge. Food. The stark beauty of the winter wilderness belies a harsh reality. Food is not easy to come by. But survival is not about ease. 
It's about adaptability and resourcefulness. In the heart of winter, small game can become a lifeline. Their tracks etched in the snow, a testament to their resilience. With wire from my kit, I set up snares along these trails. Patience becomes a virtue in this game of survival, as these traps might not yield immediate results. While the snares were at work, I turned my attention towards another source of sustenance, edible winter plants. The landscape might seem barren, but beneath the blanket of snow, life persists. Armed with knowledge, one can find sustenance in the most unlikely places. Bark from certain trees can be a source of nutrients. Birch, for example, is rich in vitamin C and can be steeped into a tea. Pine needles, too, can be used for a vitamin-rich brew. Then there are wintergreen berries, a bright spot of color in the white expanse. These offer a small burst of flavor and energy. Then there's the humble cattail, often found near bodies of water. While their distinctive heads are long gone in winter, the roots are a treasure trove of starch. They can be roasted or ground into a flour substitute. Of course, foraging in winter is not without its risks. Misidentification can lead to consuming toxic plants, so knowledge and caution are paramount. As the day wore on, the snares yielded a small game, a welcome addition to the foraged bounty. With the catch cleaned and prepared, it was time to cook. The aroma of roasting meat mingled with the crisp winter air, a comforting reminder of the day's success. As the sun set, a small meal awaited, a testament to the bounty of nature if one knows where to look. Nourishment in the wilderness is not just about the catch or the find, it's about the knowledge, the patience, the resilience. It's a test. Day four brought with it a primal necessity, fire. In the face of dropping temperatures and dwindling daylight, fire was not just a comfort. It was a lifeline. It was warmth. It was a means to cook. It was a beacon against the encroaching darkness. Fire, in the heart of winter, was survival. Creating fire in the wilderness, especially in wet winter conditions, is no simple task. It's a test of patience and skill, but with a few tried and true methods, you can coax a spark into a flame. The first method is the classic flint and steel. Striking the steel against the flint generates sparks. Aim these sparks onto a small pile of dry tinder, and with a bit of patience and careful blowing, you'll have a flame. Another method, slightly more unconventional, involves a battery and steel wool. By connecting the positive and negative terminals of the battery with the steel wool, you create a short circuit. The resulting heat causes the steel wool to glow and ignite. Again, you transfer this to your tinder, blow gently, and voila, fire. But creating fire is only half the battle. The real challenge lies in maintaining it, especially in wet conditions. Choose your firewood wisely. Dead hanging branches are often drier than those found on the ground. If the outside is wet, you can split the wood to get to the dry heartwood within. Remember to feed your fire gradually, starting with small twigs and building up to larger logs and never let your fire get too big. A small controlled fire is easier to maintain and uses less fuel. With a fire crackling, the camp felt a little more like home, a beacon of warmth in the icy wilderness. Fire was not just about surviving the night, it was about lifting spirits, cooking meals, and restoring a sense of normalcy amid the stark reality of survival. Fire was, and always will be, a symbol of hope in the face of adversity. The fifth day was about refinement and organization. The initial urgency of survival had given way to a more measured approach. I turned my attention back to my shelter. The lean-to that had been hastily thrown together now required upgrading. I added more insulation, layering pine branches and leaves to trap the heat better. It was time-consuming work but the payoff was a warmer, cozier home base. Simultaneously, I took the opportunity to organize my tools methodically, a place for everything, and everything in its place, as the saying goes. This would save precious time in the coming days. Firewood was next on my list. I gathered and prepared additional logs, ensuring I had enough to last for the next couple of days. Fire, after all, was a lifeline in the unforgiving winter wilderness. With the camp now more efficient, survival no longer felt like a battle. With my immediate survival needs met, it was time to venture out, and explore. Now that I had a secure base, it was crucial to familiarize myself with the territory. The wilderness can be deceivingly monotonous, and getting lost is easier than you might think. So, it was time to put my navigation skills to the test. My first priority was to identify landmarks. These are distinct features in the landscape that can serve as points of reference. These could be anything from a uniquely shaped tree, a distinct rock formation, or even a particularly high hill. 
Knowing these landmarks made it easier to orient myself within the wilderness, reducing the risk of getting lost. Next, I set up markers along safe paths. This was a precautionary measure. If a snowstorm were to hit, these markers would guide me back to my camp. I used natural materials like stones and branches to create these markers, ensuring they stood out against the snow but didn't disturb the environment. Navigation wasn't just about getting from point A to point B, it was also about understanding the terrain and identifying potential hazards. Steep slopes, frozen rivers, and dense thickets may seem harmless at first glance, but they can pose significant risks in a survival situation. Identifying these hazards ahead of time allowed me to plan my routes and activities accordingly. Lastly, I put my orienteering skills to the test. Using a compass and map, I plotted my location relative to the landmarks I'd identified. This exercise was more than just a test of my navigational abilities. It was a way to mentally map the wilderness, transforming it from an alien landscape into a familiar home. The wilderness was no longer a mystery, but a map filled with resources and hazards. It was a place that demanded respect, but also offered the tools for survival. It was a place where preparedness and adaptability were rewarded, and where the margin between success and failure was razor thin. And it was a place where, as long as you had the right skills and mindset, you the final day was about reflection and preparation for the journey back. As the first light of dawn painted the sky, I started to dismantle my camp. Each item found its place back in the backpack, each footprint was smoothed over, each sign of human presence was carefully erased. Leaving no trace is a fundamental principle of survival. It respects the wilderness and ensures that those who come after us can also experience the raw beauty of nature. Throughout this week, I've honed my survival skills and tested my resilience against the merciless winter. I've built shelter, procured water, gathered food, made fire, improved my camp, and navigated through the wilderness. Every day was a new lesson, a new challenge, and a new opportunity to adapt and overcome. As I prepared to leave, I carried with me not just my backpack, but a wealth of knowledge and a deep... Surviving a harsh winter in the wilderness is about more than enduring the cold. It's about preparing, adapting, and overcoming. This seven-day challenge was an intense journey of survival, testing not just physical fortitude but mental resilience as well. From setting up a camp and securing water to gathering food and making fire, every day presented new obstacles and ways to navigate them. By improving the camp, exploring the surroundings, and preparing for exit, we learned that survival is not just about withstanding harsh conditions, but also about understanding and respecting the power of nature. It's about being well-prepared, resourceful, and resilient. If this journey has enlightened you about the nuances of wilderness survival, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more such survival adventures and share your thoughts or questions in the comments. Stay prepared, stay safe, and remember, the wilderness demands respect and so does survival.